Hello there, this is the Everyday Economist. Today I will be answering some of the questions I got about my thoughts on removing Russia from the SWIFT economic and banking communication system and what the repercussions of that will be. And to answer that question, we really have to look at the bigger picture and the four possible outcomes and reasons behind Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I did predict that we will have a war right after the Winter Olympics last November in this video. You can go look at it. And it is interesting to see how that prediction has come true. And in this video, I will be discussing the four possible outcomes of this war that is currently ongoing. So let's get started. The first outcome, I believe that what Vladimir Putin is trying to hope to do here is to replace the current regime in, in Ukraine. That is the best case scenario with him. And to replace it with a pro-Moscow puppet. And that will only be accomplished once he has crippled morale in the Ukrainian military, which he is obviously facing great difficulty in achieving. And he also needs to capture Kiev. The capital of any nation has symbolic value in war. That is one of the reasons why, why the Germans lost to the Russians. Even though they were very close to capturing the capital, they nevertheless failed despite obliterating Russia's army they nevertheless lost because they couldn't capture the capital. And if they had captured the capital, the outcome of that war would definitely have been different. Nevertheless, they could also control large parts of the country to the uh, west of the Dnipro River. And that includes Kiev, which is very, very close and situated on that river. And once they have done that, they will install a pro-Russian and a pro-Moscow puppet, similar to the one they had with Yanukovych prior to 2014. And that government would then announce new agreements relating to trade and military cooperation with Russia. And they would also at the same time be announcing Ukraine's isolation and withdrawal from any NATO and Western uh, agreed upon treaties relating to, again, economics and military and defense. That's the most least likely outcome on what I believe Vladimir Putin's initial aim was. The second least likely, going towards the most likely outcome, is Russia forces Ukraine to a peace deal. So they don't topple the government in Kiev, but they, de, de, they reduce morale to an extent where Kiev is nevertheless forced to a white peace, where they are now brought into the table by Russia because now they hold so much leverage over them. And Russia could do this by owning not the majority of Ukraine, but at least owning strategic points like we saw with Chernobyl or Odessa, and not just have presence there, but actually exercise significant military control to the extent where Ukraine is nevertheless forced to negotiate face-to-face -face with Russia. This is good for Russia because they save, save face in the fact that they couldn't achieve their core objective of toppling Kiev, but nevertheless they could save face by forcing Ukraine to capitulate one way or another while at the same time maintaining the current government that is currently in charge of Ukraine. The third likely outcome is that Russia annexes massive portions of Ukraine. Again, not all, but mostly up to the Dnipro River, where we see the major cities uh, to the west of Crimea. So more than they already have prior to 2014. And this is, again, different from what they even did after 2014 and their invasion of Crimea, because Russia had soft exercise of control. I mean, they did have practical control, but it was a soft control because it, they had plausible deniability in the sense that they said it was Russian-backed militias who were controlling these areas. But in this outcome, they themselves will be exercising control and they will have full military and political and economic ownership and control over these areas. And they're significant because they contain some of Europe's largest natural gas fields in this area. And Russia knows that despite all the sanctions, if he controls the natural gas pipelines and sources of Europe, uh, Europe has no choice but to come to Russia and negotiate and potentially remove whatever sanctions they've currently placed once the dust settles. And this is also ideal for Russia because it leaves the Ukrainian government basically split into this western part in a very crippled and disoriented manner that's maimed and has very little control, strategic or otherwise, of hampering Russian aggression and influence within their borders. So this is an unlikely outcome that could come. It's not the most likely outcome, but let's see what the most likely outcome is. The most likely outcome, and this is based on the 
current developments we see with the fierce resistance that the Ukrainian people have been putting with the help of the Western nations and NATO. And that would then would mean that Russia is, has no option but to retreat, but they would do so in a scorched earth manner. They're not like America and Afghanistan where they're going to come to the table and just pull out at once. They're going to have a slow but methodical retreat where they will be burning and destroying key and critical infrastructure relating to Ukraine's military and economic organs relating to major roads, highways, power plants, dams and bridges. And we've already seen some of this happening in Crimea. But if Russia and specifically Vladimir Putin, who is very concerned with his ego and saving face, is concerned with retreating, he will be forced to do this. And the other reason is that if Ukraine joins NATO, which they 100% will after this, as will other countries in the Nordic portions will be, they will, whatever's left of Ukraine and whatever's going to join NATO will be crippled and destroyed and not really worthwhile. And they will be desperate and disoriented. And that's a recipe for Russia to come in and capitalize on that disorientation, as we saw in 2016 with what they did in, uh, in the elections. The real winner of this war, and I think this is what will be recorded in the pages of history for years to come, was the intelligence by Western nations. We have to remember, going back to the lead up of what happened on the eve of this invasion, Russia was planning to stage a false flag operation where they would therefore have a cause similar to the Gulf of Tonkin incident, where they would then go in and claim and, and say this is a defensive war, not an offensive invasion, maybe even a liberation of sorts of redeeming Russian, uh, uh, the attack that was on, forced on Russia by the Ukrainian people and the military. And Ukrainian uh, intelligence, but also Western intelligence, were very clever in choosing what to release in terms of classified information. They basically blew the cover of Vladimir Putin's attempted plans of staging a false flag operation. So they basically showed his hand, forced him to show his hand. They removed the ability of Putin to stage a false flag operation, number one. They then, most importantly, showed what Putin was planning to do and specifically which cities he was targeting and how he was targeting it weeks, if not months, in advance. And this, again, shows, it sends a clear signal from to Moscow from Washington that, hey, Vladimir Putin, we have the highest political class and the highest upper echelons of your military compromised and at our behest. So you better watch what you're doing. And this will send shivers down Vladimir Putin's spine because as a person who was former KGB and an intelligence officer, he appreciates when someone's been compromised, especially <clears throat> if that's him. So the Western intelligence basically very clearly showed what will be happening. We saw that they clearly showed that Russia will be invading from Belarus. And many people on social media and the media in general were laughing at this. They're saying the, the, the uh, Western intelligence is trying to exaggerate things. They're like, this will never happen from Belarus. Maybe they would do it from Crimea, but from another sovereign nation? Give me a break. But that's exactly what happened. We saw heavy armored mob mobile units deployed in this area in the north. Then we saw heavy foot mobiles mobilized in the east here close to Donetsk, but also of the Dnipro River, close to the east of that, near the Donbass region and wherever Putin claimed that the separatists had a legitimate government. And then we saw some naval forces and aircrafts mobilized in Crimea. And because of knowing where Putin was going to act, Western intelligence was, about, was basically allowed to disperse scarce resources that they have given to Ukraine in terms of military assets and allocated efficiently where needed. So they allocated anti-armor uh, units to and defensive capabilities to Ukraine in the north. They allocated anti-infantry and mines to the east, and they basically concentrated anti-aircraft capabilities in the south. And because they knew where each type of unit Russia was deploying in advance, well in advance, they, that is why we see this fierce resistance, because for every Russian attack, Ukraine has a proper and equal, if not greater, counterattack. And that's solely, again, because of the intelligence that was at play here. It shows how far and how far wide-reaching 
Western intelligence capabilities is. And Russia, and specifically Putin, should be on high alert because it shows that he is compromised at the highest levels beyond what he previously had imagined. He was forced to do a rushed attack because of this, and it's so far a disaster. And it, my worry is that because he has nothing to lose at this point, he will level cities while he retreats in order to save face from this incredible loss. And if you're interested in this, in my discussion of Russian oligarchs and how the Russian system is built, specifically the Russian economy, I discussed in my previous video, The Great Reset and Why You Will Own Nothing. I even predicted in this video, which is a re-upload from November of last year, I predicted that we will be having a war in March of 2022, as I mentioned earlier. So this is a video where I talk about Mikhail Khodorovsky and other Russian oligarchs and how they all play into Vladimir, system, Vladimir Putin's mafia-like system. So if you're interested, check this video out, and I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.